Good morning. Welcome to Crossroads Online. I hope you're ready to worship. Gather around and sing with us.
favorite verses from Psalm 37 says this, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. I I love that part about do not fret. Uh, One of my favorite devotional authors, Oswald Chambers, writes about this and he says, Resting in the Lord does not depend on external circumstances at all but on your relationship to God himself. So it's not what's happening around you, it's more what's happening within you that determines whether you're resting in the Lord or whether you're anxious and worried. You know, throughout this COVID-19 pandemic, we are constantly reminded by the Spirit of God, do not fret, do not be afraid, don't be anxious, but rest in the Lord and wait on him. Cry out to him and he will hear your prayer. I'm coming under This walk can often feel lonely No matter what Until this race is won I will stand my ground Where hope can be found I will stand my ground Where hope can be found just a moment, we're going to come to the point in our service when we receive our tithes and offerings. And and I wanted to just give a quick illustration. You know, uh, whenever I read in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, I kept reading it. Even in my devotions this morning, I couldn't get past the fact that God continually, repeatedly, over and over, tells His people, the people of Israel, when you go to the promised land, you are to tithe. You are to bring an offering to me of the first fruits 
of all that the land produces for you. And it, you, you cannot read the Bible and, and not see this uh, principle of the tithe from Genesis to Revelation. God gives it. And I just wanted an illustration. I've got 10 peaches here uh, because I, I love a peach tree. My grandmother used to have a peach tree in her yard, and I'm a peach of a guy. So I wanted to use this as an illustration. Uh, God says, I want you to give a tithe of the first fruits. Tithe means 10%. So if I have 10 peaches and God says, I want you to take 10% of the 10 peaches, what would be 10% of the 10 peaches? It would be one peach, right? So I take one peach and I say, okay, this is the 10%, I'm giving it to God. And then with the rest of these peaches, uh, say three peaches I use to pay for my mortgage, two peaches I use to pay for my house, uh, two peaches I use to pay for my car, and then two more peaches for clothes and Christian school. Well, this is what God says. He says to the people of Israel, you must take of the first of all of the soil's produce that you harvest from the land the Lord your God is giving you and put it in a container. He says, put it in a container. And what he says is, he wants them, then you take the container, go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to have his name dwell. Then the priest will take the container from your hand and place it before the altar of the Lord your God. And then you will then place the container before the Lord your God and bow down to him. You will worship the Lord. Then you uh, will rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given you and your household. So this is what they would do. They would take a container. They would put uh, 10% of the produce that they had uh, harvested. And they would take this and they would bring it to the Lord as an offering. They would set it before God. And then after they gave their offering, they would worship. And that's what offering is. That's what tithing is. It's an act of worship. And so I want you to watch this video that we're going to show you about how easy it is to give online. Today we don't use peaches. We use a paycheck. And so in your paycheck, God says, I want you to take 90% and live off of that. Take 10% and bring it to the storehouse, the local church. And watch this video just to see how easy it is to give online and, and to be faithful to God in that area. And if you're uh, a member of our church, I want to thank you for your faithfulness. If you don't have a church home and you're watching online, uh, then I want to encourage you to partner with Crossroads Bible Church because we believe that God is working through our ministry. We're sharing the good news with people. And so we would love to have you partner with us financially. And we would love for you to consider Crossroads Bible Church your church home. We'd like to show you just how easy it is to give online. You can go to our website, cbcmd.org, and you can click on the three bars in the top right-hand corner and click on the page that says Give. If you scroll down, you'll see a button that says Give Online. You can click on that. It will redirect you to a secure portal. If you're giving your normal tithes and offerings, you can choose the fund that says General Fund, and you can put in any dollar amount that you feel led to give. You can give that amount by a credit or debit card by putting in the name of your card, the card information, your expiration date, and your billing address. If you would like to give with your bank account, you can do that by choosing bank account and putting in the name of your account and choosing checking or savings account. If you would like to make the gift recurring, you can click on the box under the donation that says make this gift recurring and it will prompt you to create a login. You can also text any amount to give to 410-202-0161. Thank you so much for your continued support to Crossroads Bible Church. Thank you for joining us today at Crossroads Bible Church. I am thrilled to come to you today with the Word of God. And I've got a word for you today because in this time that we're living in. I call it the twilight zone. This has been a very strange experience for all of us. In fact, I think one word that well defines the lifestyle for all of us in this lockdown, and that is the word 
stuck. We're stuck. And many times it's easy to get bored. And But at the same time, it gives us a lot of time to reflect over our life and the direction of our life. I want to share with you today a story about a man who also was very stuck in life. And I want to speak to you on the subject matter on how to get unstuck. And that's our message today. And I realize that many people get stuck in life. There are situations and circumstances that come up that stop us from going forward. And many times it is our past. Many times it is bad habits or unresolved conflict in our life or many times depression, sometimes prolonged grief over a period of time. We get stuck in In the past, and sometimes uh, the negative things that happen to us in life cause us to get stuck, and we just stop moving forward and we go backwards in life. But today, I want to talk to you about the importance of moving forward. Many times, even in our Christian walk, we get stuck spiritually. I was thinking to myself, what are the areas that cause me to get stuck in my own Christian life? And I thought many times neglect, the neglect of reading the Bible or neglect of praying as intense as I should or just seeking the Lord or pursuing the Lord with all my heart. Many times we allow the busyness of life to just bog us down and we get our wheels stuck and sometimes we just stay right there spiritually. And many times we we don't give the attention to spiritual things as God wants us to give. But today I want to talk to you about a man who lived in ancient Jerusalem and uh, or Jericho and this man's name was Bartimaeus. He was a blind man and uh, he had every reason in the world uh, to excuse himself for being stuck because of his own personal circumstances. In fact, uh, the first thing he was stuck is because the Bible says he was blind. Uh, Obviously, he was probably blind by birth. You could see the whites in his eyes that he never really did see in his former life. Secondly, he was reduced to begging. The Bible said that he sat by the the roadside and he just begged for money. That's the only kind of livelihood that he could depend on. And then also, uh, he was an object of pity. Many people felt sorry for him. And that's kind of a, a, a bad place to be where people pity you and they feel sorry for you. And also, he was reduced to a life or an occupation of depending on other people's sympathies to get them through in life. But the good thing is, in this story in Mark chapter 10, this blind man, this man who was stuck in life, he was able to break free. He was able to become unstuck, and he was able to go on and do great things for the Lord. And there are certain things about this man's life, uh, certain things that this man did to break free from his stuck life. Maybe you're stuck. Maybe there are, maybe it's a bad marriage and you're stuck. Maybe it's an uh, unforgiving spirit or there's things going on in your life that has caused you to stop. Maybe it's financial pressure and problems that have caused you to, to become so worried and so stressed out that it, it stopped you from parenting or it stopped you from uh, moving forward with the joy and purpose in your life. So today I want to share with you five things that this man who was stuck in life, five things this man did to break free, to to move forward, to get victory in his life. And I want to share them with you because these are five practical, very practical points that we can embrace. These are five points that we can apply to our life, that we can get the victory. Number one, I want us to look at the first principle of breaking free, and that is we need to assume responsibility for our own life. Assume the responsibility for our own life. That's the first thing that blind Bartimaeus did. In fact, the Bible says in verse 47 in in Mark chapter 10, he says, and when he heard that it was Jesus, the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. That's what I like about this guy. He had heard about Jesus and he decided that he was not going to stay in a very defeated position in life. He was not going to stay stuck, but rather he had decided, I want out 
of this life of bondage, and I want to move forward. Now, it's interesting to me that blind Bartimaeus, uh, he didn't blame others for being stuck. You know, that's that's a common problem that we have when we get stuck. We have a tendency to, well, it's my parents' fault, or it's my spouse's fault, or it's someone who hurt me in the past. Uh, it's their fault why I'm in a bad, deplorable state today. Uh, sometimes we blame other people for uh, the problems they inflict in our life that cause us to be derailed. I remember a man in my early ministry, his first name was Harrison. And I remember I was in my 20s. It was the first church I pastored. And uh, I remember Harrison, uh, someone came to me and said he was a man that used to go to the church that I was pastoring at that time, but he had been out of church for a long time. And they encouraged me. They said, Pastor, we wish you'd go by. And he was such a faithful member at one time, and he was such a dedicated worker and was always there when the doors were open, always willing to do something. And and I said, sure, I'll be glad to. So I went out and I talked to this uh, big burly guy. Uh, his name was Harrison. And, and I said, Harrison, we sure miss you out the church. And the first thing he said to me is, I'll never put foot in a church again. And I sat there for an hour and I listened to this man unleash this tremendous anger and frustration toward people and Christians and the Bible and Jesus. And he was so negative. Uh, and basically... I thought to myself, well, we're not going to get anywhere. So we talked for a little bit. And so I just kind of left him. I said, well, I'll be praying for you. I'm sorry for the bad situation that took place. Uh, he went on to share with me that he was an usher in the church and he was taking the offering. And someone uh, accused him of taking money out of an offering tray. And he was devastated by this by this one rumor that this man had spread about him. And uh, it just it made him angry. And it wasn't long before Harrison got so filled with rage and anger. Obviously, he quit church. Uh, it wasn't long before he picked up drinking. And the drinking really messed up his life. And it wasn't long before he and his wife separated. Then they got divorced. And uh, he just seemed to go downward and spiraling downward in a life of total frustration. And when I went to see him, I think I saw him at the lowest point in his life. And the whole time he was blaming all the people, all the people of the world, all the bad Christians. And as he was sharing these things with me, I realized that this man uh, was not assuming the responsibility for the wayward path that he took. And I began to share with him. I said, your first response was to forgive, not to get angry, to not get bitter, but rather get better. And I talked to him about even Jesus was falsely accused. There are many times where people will falsely accuse us and say things, but we've got to realize that we cannot carry this bitterness in our life and we can't blame other people for the wrong reaction that we take in life. And as I begin to share with him about how God loves him and how he needs to forgive this man, and he said he basically would, and I said, I would be glad to go with you to meet this man who accused you of stealing money and and to get it right. He said, Pastor Tim, I would love that. He said, but he's been dead for about seven years. He's been gone. And I thought to myself, for 15 years, this man has been sitting on the bottom of life, angry at the world, angry at a man who'd been dead for years. And I thought to myself, so many times, what a great challenge to remind us that when bad things are hurled at us, when bad things uh, come at us, we need to realize that God wants us to forgive. He wants us to put things behind us. He wants us to move forward, to receive uh, God's help and strength in times of difficulty. But in time, this man finally did overcome. He got back into church in the last years of his life. He got back into being an usher. The joy of the Lord was restored in his life. And he became uh, one of my stories of victory, how God just brought him back to uh, a place of peace and comfort and purpose again in his life. Sometimes it's very easy for us to shift blame. We want to blame everyone else for the problems that happen into our life. But we've got to assume the responsibility. Blind Bartimaeus. He heard that Jesus Christ was coming, and the Bible says he cried out. 
he cried out. Now, the second thing I want to share with you, and, the, and that is in verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus, the Nazarene, he began to cry out. He believed. He heard that Jesus was coming to his town. He believed that if Jesus Christ was coming, Jesus had the power to lift all men out of their unstuck situations. Jesus has the power to release us, to help us to break free from the bondage and the the things that bind us in life. This man cried out, Jesus, you're my only hope. Jesus, you're my helper. You're my helper in a time of need. This man just cried out. He believed that he could change. Now, if we want to get unstuck, we got to believe that God has the lifting power to bring us out of the miry clay. He's got the power to bring us up out of that rut. He has the power to bring us out of that mundane place uh, that, that the devil desires to keep us bound. And then I want you to look at the third thing. The third thing that blind Bartimaeus did, and that was to clarify his real need. In fact, I like this. Blind Bartimaeus cries out to Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me. Jesus hears his voice, calls for blind Bartimaeus to come to him. The people bring blind Bartimaeus to Jesus. Jesus looks into the whites, the blind white eyes of this blind man. And Jesus asks this question, what will thou that I should do unto thee? What do you want me to do? Now, obviously, we know that Jesus is omniscient. That, that's a theological word that means that God is all-knowing. All he knows all things. Of course he does. He knows what you're going to ask before you even ask. He knows a thought even before it comes to your mind. He knows the words that you speak before it comes off your lips. He knows everything. But what Jesus was wanting blind Bartimaeus to do is to clarify his real need. Now, this is so important. When we understand the needs that we have in life, it's so important to confess that before the Lord. Now, that's difficult. Uh, we live in a very narcissistic world. We live in a world where, where we just want to think that we're all supermen or superwomen. And we have a tendency to, to have a difficult time confessing our needs before the Lord. But Jesus was looking at this man and saying, what is it you want me to do for you? This is paramount. If you want God to help you, then you got to confess, what do you need God to do for you today? What do you want God to do for you? Is it, is it an area of new friends, uh, new people in your life to, to lift you up and to encourage you? Or maybe a greater security in your life? Maybe you need finances. Maybe you need a financial help. Uh, whatever you need, maybe it's healing. Maybe it's better health, or maybe it's restora restoration, or maybe a renewal of spirit. What is it that you want God to do for you? Uh, maybe you want God to intervene in a, a bad relationship, and you want healing there. Whatever you want God to do, get specific with God. Ask him sp specifically, and God will do it. I love this because Jesus looks right into the face of this blind man, and he says, Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And I like blind Bartimaeus. He was to the point. He didn't ramble on with a bunch of mumbo jumbo. He, he didn't try to go around Charlie's barn to explain something. He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And it was very short to the point. And, and I love this. Whatever you want God to do for you, we've got to get specific before him. And then number four. You got to stop worrying about what other people say. And many times we're so afraid. Uh, peer pressure has a tendency to influence us. We're so afraid what someone else might say. Uh, maybe we'll be afraid to really seek the Lord or get excited about the Lord or to open up spiritually and take off and praise the Lord like we should. We're so inhibited. We're so held down by the opinions of people. We're so afraid someone's going to say, oh, he's a fanatic or, or she's a fanatic. And we're so afraid of people saying something about us. But this is what I love about blind Bartimaeus. In fact, the Bible says in verse 48, and here blind Bartimaeus is crying out, Lord, 
have mercy on me. And this is what verse 48 says. And many, many people charged him and said that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of mercy, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I love that. He cried the more a great deal. Oh, I love that. And, and we need to stop worrying about what people say. Here he is crying out, God, help me. Jesus, help me. And the people are saying, be quiet. You know, you're, you're disrupting the peace. Uh, you're disrupting uh, this worship service. And, and you're disrupting this, this reverent moment where Jesus is in our presence. And they're basically telling him, you know what? You need to keep quiet. I have found in my life, and I found this early in my life, that I cannot allow people to hold me back. In fact, sometimes you just got to get past people. You just got to elbow your way past them. You just got to come to the place to say, you know what? I'm not going to let my spouse stop me or people that I work with stop me. I love the Lord and I need the Lord. And if you want to get unstuck, then you've got to get to the place where you don't care about what other people think about you or say about you or believe about you. You just got to learn to cry out to the Lord. I love it when people have that outward expression of the Lord. Once in a while, I'll be in a public place and I'll hear someone praise the Lord or they'll say great things about the Lord. I get thrilled to hear uh, popular sports uh, uh, athletes who give praise and glory to God uh, before the whole world on TV. They'll say, I, I want to give Jesus Christ all the praise and all the glory. I love it where people show great courage to cry out to the Lord, to bless him and to honor him and to worship him. Worship him. If you want to get unstuck in life, you got to get past people. You got to get past what other people think and what other people feel. And so many times we stay stuck because we've allowed peer pressure to seat us in a place of indifference. And then number five, you got to take a, a bold step of faith. The reason blind Bartimaeus moved out of that place of blindness to a place of vision and wonderful life again, again a life of, of an occupation. He maybe found a beautiful lady he could marry and had kids with her later on, and, and he had a wonderful occupation. I don't know what happened to Bar, blind Bartimaeus, but I guarantee you one thing. His life became very exciting. He moved out of that little cave with that little rag of a jacket, with that little tin cup, in that little teeny world of darkness. He moved out of that unstuck place into a vibrant place of true living color. Boy, I love that story. But it all took place because he took a bold step of faith. Jesus heard that voice. He heard that cry. Jesus knew that cry was not like other cries. It was a cry of mercy. It was a cry of help. And Jesus heard him and he stopped. In fact, the Bible says, and Jesus stood still. He stood still because he heard that voice. And he said, bring that man to me. And they brought this man. But I love what the Bible says in verse 50. And he, casting away his garment, arose and came to Jesus. I love that. Now, here is the most important thing. He cast away his garment. That garment was his heater in the wintertime. That garment was his, truly, his security blanket. He cast it aside. It just shows me his bold faith. I don't need this any longer. I'm going to turn to the Lord, and I'm going to receive God's help and God's strength. He cast away his garment, and he came to Jesus. And I can see blind Bartimaeus now throwing away that old tin cup, throwing away that old security blanket, and these men helping him, ushering him into the presence of the Lord to find the healing and the, the miracle that he, was, that he was seeking. Sometimes it's scary to take a bold step. That's what we need to do. Some of us need to take a bold step and say, you know what? I'm going to cast aside that liquor. I don't need it. 
I don't need it. I don't need to depend on substance abuse or drugs to, to, to keep me comfortable or to numb me. I'm going to cast it aside. Some of us have got a hold of some bad habits, and we've got a hold of some things that satisfy us and keep us comfortable in the ruts that we're living in. We've got to cast it aside, and you've got to come to Jesus. Whatever you do, cast it aside and run to him, and God will help you. You've got to cast off the things uh, of materialism and run to Jesus and pick up the Bible and embrace the Word of God. Get up in the morning and just start, instead of watching TV, getting into the presence of the Lord. Read the Scriptures and talk to the Lord. Share your heart with Him. Pour your heart out to Him. Share your needs with Him. Share your concerns with Him. And when you do these things, you cast everything aside and get into His presence. That's a bold step of faith. Go to church on Sunday. Uh, I know right now churches are closed, but we're having church online. Uh, You can worship the Lord even through this TV. You can worship God through your computer on this online service. We're bringing the word of God to you. And you can cast aside all of the things of the world and embrace the Lord with all of your heart. He loves you. He loves you just like he loved blind Bartimaeus. And he's looking at you and he's saying, what Will you have me do for you? You can get out of that place of bondage. You can become unstuck if you'll take the steps to ask God to help you to move forward. Assume the responsibility of your own life. It's up to you. You're either going to sit in that rut and live a boring life and miss God's will for your life. You need to believe that you can change. God can change anyone. Thirdly, you got to clarify what you need. What is it that you want God to do for you? And then fourthly, stop worrying about what other people say. Just start praising him. Start worshiping him. Just start talking about him, reading about him in the word. And then number five, take a bold step of faith. Do something. Just disrupt your regular lifestyle. Don't keep doing the same thing that keeps giving you the same results in life. Do something different. Embrace the Lord Jesus. Live for him. Walk with him and let him become your help. You can get unstuck. You can get unstuck even during this pandemic. Yep, all of us are stuck in some areas physically. But spiritually, you can be set free. And you can live an exciting life of worship and an intimate walk with Jesus Christ, our Lord. I hope and pray this has been a blessing to you. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for your life. He loves you. He wants to free you up just like he did this blind man. Well, God bless you. Would you receive the Lord today? Would you open your heart and say, God, I want to invite you as my God and my Savior? The Bible says, for whosoever... For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He died on the cross for you. He paid for your sins in full. And he offers the gift of salvation if you'll but receive him. He loves you. And if you'll cry out to him, he'll stop. He'll listen. And he'll call you to himself. And he will fix what needs to be fixed in your life. Pray with me this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. And right now, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I receive you as my God and my Savior. Now, Jesus, do a work in my life. Lift me from the mud and the mire of this world. Help me to become unstuck. Help me to break free. And Lord, help me to walk in newness of life with you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and thank you for sharing the word with us today. And I hope and pray you grow in grace and go for God and get unstuck.